Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I have 25 cents and I don't know what to do with it. I wish there was something I could spend it on. Well, I'm sold. May 1st, 1999 is, in my opinion, the day Spongebob officially debuted on Nickelodeon. It was the first time the world was introduced to an episode of the show. Every year on May 1st, I always post a tweet acknowledging the anniversary, since that's when I consider it to be. However, Nickelodeon seems to consider the official premiere of Spongebob to be on July 17th. In 2009 and 2019, the 10th and 20th anniversaries of the series respectively were celebrated in July and not May. Bubble Stand is the episode where Spongebob creates and runs a bubble stand. This episode premiered on July 17, 1999 and is considered by Nickelodeon and quite a few fans as the official premiere of the series. Personally, I have called the May 1st premiere a sneak peek in the past, but it's still when the very first episode officially premiered in the US. Also, every Spongebob timeline has to start with episode 1, Help Wanted. Despite this, it still gathered in a decent amount of views and is still a monumental moment in the series history. After this, Episodes from Season 1 came out at a decent pace. This episode also introduces Spongebob's hobby of bubble blowing, which is another memorable part of the show, so it's important that it shows that off well. This episode is often talked about and is considered a pure example of what people would call classic Spongebob, which everybody refers to as Seasons 1, 2, and 3. I love this episode too, so I decided to rewatch it to see if Spongebob's bubble blowing is impressive, especially compared to mine. So the episode starts up and it's a beautiful, peaceful day in Bikini Bottom. Spongebob admires it and then starts rapid fire building a stand. Squidward tells him to quiet down without first opening his window, which Spongebob complies with. He tries to build it more quietly, but makes no progress. Next, we see the inside of Squidward's house for the first time and see him playing the clarinet for the first time. We also learn he's not good at playing it. His bad music playing causes Spongebob to go back to the rapid fire noise building and we see that Spongebob has built a stand for blowing bubbles for 25 cents a pop. Squidward thinks this is ridiculous. Just then, Patrick comes out and we see a little den under his rock home. Patrick comes over to Spongebob's stand to blow a bubble and Squidward goes back to his own pastime. Patrick tries to blow a bubble, but he struggles to do so, so Spongebob offers lessons for 25 cents. I'll take every lesson you offer. At this point, we learn Spongebob's iconic bubble blowing technique, one of the many things this episode is famous for, which includes the classic pelvic thrust and the legendary bring it around town. Spongebob starts blowing bubbles of all shapes and sizes. Then he blows a bubble with two hands on the wand, and we hear another hilarious Patrick line. It's a giraffe! No Patrick, it's a rhinoceros. The giant bubble goes inside Squidward's house, pops, and explodes out a ton of normal bubbles. Squidward, angry, comes outside and scolds Spongebob and Patrick for making so much noise just blowing bubbles. Spongebob says they're making bubble art and shows off his technique, which is the reason why he calls it bubble art. Squidward just thinks the idea is stupid, making Spongebob and Patrick sad, so they go inside Spongebob's house. However, Squidward reluctantly gets an interest in the bubbles due to Spongebob using the word art. He tries to secretly blow a bubble, but Spongebob and Patrick catch him. When Spongebob mentions the lessons, Squidward thinks you don't need lessons for bubble blowing, but gives him a quarter anyway. Squidward is quickly proven wrong because when he blows a bubble, he sputters and the bubble just falls to the ground and pops. Squidward tries to continue to blow bubbles and Spongebob and Patrick try to get him to do the technique with Squidward not listening. This goes on for a while until they finally get his attention. Squidward gets fed up and starts doing the technique to mock Spongebob, except with a thicker bring it around town. After he finishes, he blows a bubble by screaming, and it's not in a shape, but the bubble is huge, and Spongebob and Patrick are very impressed. Even Squidward was happy with the giant bubble he blew. While Spongebob and Patrick said it's all in the technique, Squidward says that he blew it with his own talent, saying it's all in his genes. Spongebob and Patrick start to chant about Squidward's genes, and Squidward goes back inside his house. He starts to play his clarinet beautifully, and is the first of one of the few times in the series he plays his clarinet well. Spongebob and Patrick chant his name because they are impressed with his bubble talent and his music talent now, and Squidward's even more happy. However, the giant bubble returns and engulfs Squidward's house, removing it off the ground and lifting it in the air. Spongebob and Patrick notice, but Squidward doesn't, but it doesn't take long for him to notice either. 
The bubble pops and Squidward's house falls from the sky and Spongebob and Patrick go back inside their houses before Squidward can scream at them. Luckily, Squidward's house lands unharmed, Squidward plays a few notes on his clarinet poorly, and the episode ends. So that was Bubble Stand. It was definitely on the simple side since most of the episode takes place in the area in front of Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward's houses with a few interior shots of Squidward's house every now and then. But does the simplicity automatically make this a bad episode? <laughs> of course not, what are you thinking? This episode is an instant classic and deserves to be thought of as such. Bubble Stand is loved by just about everybody who's seen it, and yours truly is no exception. There was a time in my life I was obsessed with this episode. I remember I watched it constantly from 2014 to 2015, so much to the point I even found a way to mimic even the most complicated parts of the technique, and the point where I would have an urge to yell, TECHNIQUE! TECHNIQUE! Whenever I hear somebody who's not me say the word technique. There have been numerous other episodes where I was obsessed with and watched them constantly, but I'd argue this is a special case because of how I actually tried to emulate the technique. There are so many amazing and guffaw-worthy scenes of this episode, such as Spongebob rapid fire building the stand, bringing it around town, it's a giraffe, the pelvic woo, Squidward's take on the technique, the bubbles Spongebob blows, and that's not even all of them. Even the shortest or the most simple of episodes can be some of the most memorable and iconic episodes, and Bubble Stand is a prime example of this. The episode itself has also made quite an impact and has snuck its way into pop culture. For example, a clip of this episode was shown in the 2001 commercial for Burger King, and the Waikikis, Prince Paul, and Wordsworth made a song about this episode called Prince Paul's Bubble Party, which was featured on the soundtrack for the Spongebob Squarepants movie. Spongebob's bubble blowing was also established in a phenomenal way, and comes back throughout the show from time to time. It mostly comes back as a plot point in future episodes, and doesn't really have a lot of episodes strictly focused on it, but it's still good regardless. His talent is amazing, and the dynamic between Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward makes the episode as good as it is. The bubble blowing by itself would probably slog on and on, so the banter makes this so much better. The flair of Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward is another factor of this episode's popularity, and it has created some very iconic episodes throughout the entirety of the show, even to this day. This episode is a great instance of the type of comedy people can expect from Spongebob and will always be a joy to watch no matter how old this episode might be. Bubble Stand is an iconic episode that will definitely be remembered by fans for a long time. It may not be talked about as much as some of the episodes from the future, but it still holds up as an instant classic. And now I feel inferior with my bubble blowing skills after talking about this episode in a more professional manner, so I'm going to find Spongebob's bubble stand and spend these 25 cents on it in order to perfect my bubble blowing skills. Three days later. Well, I couldn't find it, so now it'll take forever for me to perfect my bubble art skills.